Hey everyone, this is Ben Beck with you in the Model Shop. So on this week's episode uh, with the Bismarck and 1700 scale, we start working up on deck one, the lower layer of the superstructure. Uh, we get it all painted up, put a couple of little details on. And the first thing I start off with is the catapult. The uh, Tom's Model Works kit came with, the detail set came with a, uh, excuse me, photo etch catapult that you can put in place. It has a couple of options, which is nice. Uh, the instruction detail though is not good. Um, and it was a little unclear on what I was supposed to do. So I looked at some photos, looked at some things online, decided what I thought looked nice, and then I set ahead, went ahead with uh, making the photo etch, putting it together and deciding if it was okay to scrape off the kit part next and replace it with that. So you know, remember that, if you're gonna do something photo etch, leave the kit part in place. So if you mess up the photo etch, at least you still have the original parts uh, to use. Once that was done, we moved on to the uh, wooden deck, again having to apply the next little layers. This became interesting because now we're starting to get into a lot of smaller pieces that are, well, they don't really fit like they're supposed to. Because again, this wood deck is not for this kit. But we worked through that and I showed that and it, it turned out okay. Then to make things more interesting, I decided uh, to go ahead and move on to the guns. So the main guns, um, Anton, Bruno, Caesar, and Dora, they're all in place. We show how that happens. And then I put together some of the smaller guns. Uh, you guys will have to comment. I haven't looked it up. I don't remember. They're the equivalent of like US five inch guns. I don't remember how many millimeters that is um, or exactly what caliber they are in German, but I put those together as well. And they're painted with the yellow uh, tops. That's for the Chase the Bismarck theme and also allegedly the color that they were painted uh, when they were making their run to get back to Germany um, in a German controlled airspace so that the ship would be easily be identifiable by uh, German dive bombers so that they didn't bomb their own battleship. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about, I, I didn't realize it in the last video and I, I caught it when I was in the middle of um, building this one, I didn't put on the German Schwachstikas on the deck when I did the deck detail. And then when you start, when I started this series, if you recall, I wasn't sure if I was even going to bother with doing that anyway. I know some people uh, in some countries are offended by that, and then I don't want people to not be able to watch the video just because there's a swastika in it, depending on what country you're in. And then for this theme. Um, I was like, well, I think they painted over it gray, and then someone commented that um, they may have just put a big gray tarp over it because clearly the swastikas are visible on the wreck at the bottom of the ocean. I just forgot. That's, that's the bottom line, is I forgot to put them on. And although, yes, I could put them in place still, even though I've done the deck detailing and go back and fix all that, I like the way the ship deck looks um, with the details that are there. And even though I kind of wanted to paint on the wood, it's just, it's just wood, It'll paint, it paints right on it, it's no big deal. So if you want to do that, uh, I don't think you'd have any trouble applying paint and a mask right to the wood deck. I'm just going to leave it because I forgot and I think that the deck looks nice the way that it is and it's not really that important and this is hardly a historically accurate build representation of the ship. Um, in fact, at this point in time, I would say if you're looking to build an accurate representation of the Bismarck, this is not the kit uh, to use in the first place. You know, I'm discovering in the 1700 scale world that there are um, a lot better options out there and people who are super talented who are making extremely accurate ships at a, at a very small scale. So I would, I would go with um, another manufacturer and in fact uh, recently here, coming up soon, someone is releasing a brand new version of the Bismarck in 1700 scale and it is very accurate, very highly detailed. I would go that route. Uh, or build one in 1200 scale, that'd be fun too, right? So anyway, uh, okay, that's enough of the details. Uh, let's get into the build. I hope everyone's doing well. Righto. So I said we were going to start on uh, the superstructure here, which is basically this piece. There's little things like, you know, there's that gap right there. I have to sort that out and 
make sure it sits flat. The rest of this sits flat. Um, I'm going to push that down and it does fine. So anyway, uh, looking at this thing, we've got wood that goes in certain spots. Uh, but I thought I'd start with the one item right in the middle, and that is this catapult. Um, as you can see, they have a molded on part, and it's okay. I have no idea exactly what to do to improve it. Um, so I have this Tom model work part. There's the set number, but I was told by someone, and I went and checked that unfortunately this isn't available at Tom's model work so right now, which is too bad. Uh, but you can go and see it's the details somewhere in here. Uh, I'm not sure what to do because these are the instructions from Tom's Models Works. And I'll spare you the details. It's for an extended or not extended catapult. And they want you to modify different parts, obviously, to make it work. But those are for the trumpeter kit. And this is not the trumpeter kit. So I'm going to have to pull out the photo etch parts. Um, try and identify how they're supposed to go on there and see what I can do to just really, I'm not going to stress about it, I just want to see if I can improve upon what is here. And so uh, we'll do that and then we also need to make little notes about what is going to be a wooden deck and what is also not going to be. So we can kind of, well, we'll start from here and work our way up. So let's make some progress and check back in. And we are back uh, with the catapult installed. Sorry I didn't go over all the nitty gritty details. But essentially the kit provided uh, catapult. I cut off the ends that protruded out and sanded down the top smooth. And then these parts, well come on stay focused the camera. These parts right here, here that's two pieces. They just meet in the middle. You can kind of see the joint right there. And then this is the catapult cover. It ran the entire length and actually extended out past. Uh, and that's probably is accurate, accurate. But um, I looked at my World of Warship game and they stopped the cover just like this so that you could see it. The original mold on piece was simulated the same way. It had the cover on here like this and then you could see the protruded catapult. So I went with that look as well because. Why bother with all this fancy photo etch detail if you're just going to cover it up so you can't see it. So it's pretty fragile, it's on there, um, but it's definitely an improvement. Uh, and that concludes everything we need to do to this piece, photo etch wise, uh, before painting it. There's a couple of little parts I can glue on to the side here, I'll do that. Uh, and then we're just going to hit it with the light gray because next up is the deck. Uh, and mostly the wood deck goes on here and I don't know I don't think we have a whole lot going on here so uh, we'll go on a couple of those parts and we'll get the paint going we'll come back when we're ready to fiddle around with the deck that'll be the next most interesting thing okay so uh, the aft portion of the superstructures deck this area it's on it went on without too much trouble uh, I just had to trim some areas right here and yeah, that was it. I mean, it doesn't fit perfectly because it's for a different kit, but it works, and that's okay. Um, up here, we're going to have a little bit more trouble. Uh, let's see. Let's just set this like so. Just seeing the idea of, yeah, it doesn't, it's not the same shape, is it? I mean, it's close but it's not the same shape. So we're just going to work with what we have and um, the solution is going to be, I'm going to cut this up in a little section. So on the trumpeter kit, like you see one, two, three pieces here. This is There's a step down. Now if we take a look here at the instructions, it's a different shape. And the tire kit has a completely different shape also. Um, the biggest hurdle is going to be right here. There's two of these, and I only have one cutout, and this cutout doesn't even line up. So I'm going to start by cutting this wood off right here and here, so I have this whole little piece by itself, and 
uh, we'll install it and do the best I can to get it to line up the best that it will and that'll that'll be it and then up here we might have to do some special modifications I I could just go ahead and cut these off um, and then stick this on and then you know scratch build some replacement parts for it that would be fine I think but it's kind of a pain to get in there so I'm just gonna see what I can do to make this work uh, I'll get back to you with it installed there we go here's the front part installed as you can see I cut up everything into little sections um, obviously there's this spot right here that I'm missing that little circle um, there's just a little machine gun goes there so it's kind of a bummer but I might fill it in with paint and you won't notice I did decide it was easiest to cut off those two details behind the turret here and then just added some strips styrene I left it unpainted so you could see uh, just to dress it up a little bit so I will paint those gray and they'll be good but I mean it looks cool from here right it's coming together nicely I think um, so now that this is all on it's all about little sub assemblies and I haven't glued this down but it's time to glue this part on here uh, for fun I think we should make some guns next because we could put the main guns in place and these lower ones down here and that'll be something neat to look at and they're not going to get in the way of uh, future assembly and we might even dabble in maybe putting in railing uh, I'm not really sure about that, but so I keep talking about I want to mount this, you know, on the wood thing, but it's it's very stable and easy to move and maneuver around. So I think I'm still gonna wait on that, um, even though I keep talking about it. So anyway, uh, wooden deck next sections installed. It required some modifying, but it turned out nice and looks good, and it's gonna work. So. Let's uh, let's do some guns. Let's do the main guns. Oh yeah, here we go with the guns. I'd like to introduce Anton, Bruno, Caesar, Dora, or wait, I don't know. This might be Caesar, and that might be. Well, this could be Dora. Th these three, they just look the same until you get them painted up and on there. Anyway, in the order, right front to back, you got Anton, Bruno, Caesar, and Dora. These are the kit provided parts. Um, they're pretty good. Uh, these pieces over here on the left, they're just part of the stuff that makes all the barrels and everything go to the back together. Um, all right, so let's let's take a peek here. The detail I've kind of gone over these before is pretty nice. You've got little ladders etched into the side right there, and I'm going to leave that because, yes, I have photo etch replacements, but the photo etch replacements going to end up looking just like that. Uh, you've got these little bumps. Those are not bolts, uh, believe it or not. There's, um, I don't actually know what the parts are called, but you can see them on the uh, original ship and photos of it. They're pretty pronounced. I was going to sand them off because I thought at this scale you won't really notice them. You wouldn't notice them. Um, but if you zoom back out to here, you can't see them anyway. The weakest part of these kits obviously here are the barrels. I mean they're big, they look crummy, they're not straight. Uh, so we bought the little brass uh, replacements uh, from Master Reality and Miniature. They're 1 700 scale of uh, 15 inch guns in brass. And as you can see they look a lot sharper, they're a little bit shorter going to have to cut off the old barrel here, drill a hole, and then attach um, the new barrel into the meaty part of the plastic styrene that's left. And then using uh, these parts over here, those in particular, um, and the clever combination of stuff inside, we'll go ahead and assemble it. For painting, it's going to be fun. Um, I am going to go ahead and shoot all of these, the uh, gray that we've been using this whole time, the RAF C gray, medium C gray, sorry, because I don't just have regular medium C gray. And then because we're doing the hunt for the Bismarck theme, this is the part that's going to be kind of fun, I think. Uh, we're painting the tops of the turrets yellow. And that'll be its whole little exercise on its own, but I think the plan is going to be, we'll go ahead and paint up the turrets 
gray, so the primed, we'll mask off and do the uh, yellow detail, and then we'll go ahead and you know we'll paint up and assemble uh, the barrels because that all can be done separately, and you want the barrels out of the way when you're doing this work. So that's my story there. That's the stuff. That's Anton Bruno Caesar and Dora, and yeah, let's get painting so we have something to look at here. Alright, here we go with painting the turrets. Uh, four step process. First step, paint the whole thing uh, gray, RF gray. Then you're going to go ahead and mask it off. Then you're going to go ahead and paint it. We're using Insignia Yellow. And there's the final product, masked off and touched up. Have to do some weathering and little details and things like that. But uh, this is the base stuff here. And this is the pattern we're using for the Hunt the Bittest Mark scheme. So let's go ahead and finish up. Uh, all the other ones and move on to the barrels. Good morning everyone. It's been well an evening <clears throat> since the last shot. So anyway, moving on with the barrels here. So this is the, uh, well when you cut out this is the kit barrel. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Just snapped off the sprue. You can see there's you know stuff that needs to be cleaned up. They did come pre-molded with a hole in the end of the barrel which is nice. But generally speaking, uh, not very good. This is the brass um, piece set replacement for it. And something to note, let's go ahead, I'll try and do this without boogering it up too bad. If I, if I line up the ends just like so, right, real close, and I hang on to it, you'll see there that it doesn't quite make it all the way to the back. Uh, you do have to cut it off right in the middle of that little section right there. So. What you do then is you cut it off, and then you're going to take a very, very sharp knife, and there you go, put a pilot hole right in the middle, as best as you can. Not that that's going to lead to success, and then take a drill bit and drill a hole in the middle. And you can see that's not perfectly centered, but it's close enough. Um, and leave it just a hair long because that leaves the option to sand this down and adjust the distance later and then you're gonna end up with those now these do require some additional work um, as you can see we can't see yet but from about here forward extrudes out past the or extends out sorry past the uh, um, turret housing so but that's okay, we got some work we're going to do on all that. Uh, the way these pieces fit together, you can see some flash and everything. Um, they do have, they do present a little bit of a uh, salute position. Not, they won't, the guns won't come out of the turret perfectly horizontal. They're up just slightly, but that's okay. But uh, anyway, that's, that's what they look like, and this gives you an opportunity to um, play with the angle and everything. You want to leave a little bit little hole a little bit bigger so that you can move them around and adjust the turrets so that or I'm sorry the barrels so that they are going to end up being straight uh, there's only eight but I am having a little bit of flashback to the Arizona build when I had to do all those five inch guns this is actually a lot less tedious so anyway let's get those assembled and uh, yeah move on to our next part all right we're back uh, we've got some things assembled, painted, and mocked up here. Let's check it out. Here's here's our forward guns. Now, they're just setting on, sitting on the uh, turret mounts, but the brass is super glued in place, and that is going to be the final position of the guns. It took a bunch of monkeying around uh, to get them parallel and straight. And if we go down here, you'll see um, that uh, looks like Bruno there is a little bit more barrel up than uh, Anton is and that's okay tried to give them all the same um, it was a little this was kinda difficult but I think that looks okay so then if you go to the back here uh, we got Caesar and Dora and they look pretty good and they were able this was a little bit more uh, the house is in the background there but you can see like you know they turned out nicely as far as uh, the barrel position and straight and pretty even. Like I said, it's all super glued in place, um, but the turrets are still just sitting on top of the mounts. Uh, we went ahead and painted up 
these smaller guns, I don't know if these are 5 inch or they're, they're probably millimeter because it's German, but um, we're going to paint the barrels and get those ready to go into place too. Using the kit, supply barrels are plastic, they're a little big, but that's okay. It's, it's, it's going to be fine. So anyway, that's the turrets with the yellow tops. I think they look good. I think they pop out. Um, we do have to put black blast bags in place. Uh, I'm going to make those out of milliput, I think. I don't have any of that. I have to go to the store and get some, so maybe that'll be uh, tomorrow's mission. And then, of course, we still have to paint the barrels. I'm thinking about maybe doing a little uh, black and gray camouflage, painting the uh, bottom. We'll paint the whole barrels the same gray, the sea gray, and then just shooting them from directly above uh, to give the tops of the barrels either like you know do like this uh, dark gray right here or even just a black um, the black would be contrasting uh, since we're kinda going out on a limb here as far as the camo and this is not an all authentic build um, there's some license for uh, you know some other license to do whatever I want basically here's a dime and there's my hand um, just a reminder of how not big this is but it's, it's okay. It looks cool. I'm pretty stoked about this. I'm really glad I went with that yellow. And as you can see, um, it looks nice. So, let's see if we can't get all this uh, painted up here now. Alright, this is it to wrap it up. Uh, all the turrets are just mocked up sitting in place. I haven't glued anything down yet, but they all have their base coats of paint on. The barrels are all painted. I've got my little camouflage scheme. Uh, the only thing we're missing is the blast bags, which we'll get to uh, next week. If you zoom in here, you can see I did the gray in the bottom and tried to do... I had to go in with a brush to get the little dippy camouflage pattern going on the barrels. But, I mean, you can see it. They're okay. You back up to right about here, uh, they almost they all but disappear. Um, the paint color that I went with is the uh, sea gray on the whole barrel, and then I went with the um, gray violet, garl violet, uh, for the barrels. I did the same on the smaller guns. They're just sitting in place. And here are our barrels in the back. You can see there's a little bit of a semi-gloss look to the way that paint ended up. I'm going to hit the whole thing again um, with the uh, flat clear kind of airbrush over the whole thing. Let's get another shot of that uh, photo etch detail there on the uh, catapult. Turned out nicely. We gotta weather it and detail it. Put something on there. But um, so yeah that's it. We gotta do the blast bags. That'll be in the next week's video if I get to it next week because I don't have any right now and it's gonna take me a while to go get it and figure out how to use it. So, anyway, that's it. The yellow, I think, looks nice. I think it's interesting. Um, I think it pops. Uh, it kind of reminds me of, like, Caterpillar yellow, even though it's Insignia yellow. But, uh, yeah, we're coming along. Looks cool. So, anyway, hope everyone's having a great week. That's it for this episode. We'll catch you next time.